This is an interesting start to the day. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Are we going to a new zone? Is that what this is? Graha. I hope you didn't mind us barging into your room for one late night feast. Oh, for our late night feast. For what it's worth, it did me a world of good to put our troubles to one side. If only for a moment. I thought you were one of the scions. <laughs> Elf Trudis, I thought you were just a scion. Yay! This man. Great Father Christmas! It's you! Hey! hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I assume this is what you get from the new event today. Because that guy is the cutest. Oh, what is this? Oh, well, then let me trade you some delicious Archon Loaf. Fair trade. <laughs> Fair trade, if I do say so myself. <laughs> well, just sprayed down Santa. Yay, thank you, Santa. Okay, is it no one else is here? It's just... Crowd. Oh, there you are. Feeling refreshed, I hope? I was about to make my way to the studium, as it happens. I want to try and speak with Scholar Montechen. And thank him for coming to our rescue in the Rostra. As it turns out, he'd come here to see us following the hearing, only to find that we'd already departed for Thavnir. Knowing him, he was probably hoping to chew the cud with his former students. Since we're still waiting, I was wondering when they are going to send us to the studium. Uh, since we're waiting for your stolen the others, I thought now the perfect time to pay him a visit. Care to join me? Hell yes. And it's settled! The twins will come too, assuming Alphano can tear himself away from his new toys. I'll let you rally the troops while I go on ahead to the phenomenon. Considering my recent impropriety, perhaps I should avoid showing my face around the studium for a time? That might be for the best. If the others should return, tell them we will not be long. These nerds. <laughs> it looks good, Alpha, and I'm not gonna lie. If Father can master these fiendish contraptions, then so can I. Heading out for a stroll? How bored are you right now? The Skolak himself was here. In that case, what are you waiting for? I too am eager to see him, though I somewhat dread the thought of visiting the studio. I dare say our notoriety precedes us. Alphano, of all people, worrying over his reputation, and our alma mater, no less, will wonders never cease. You understand soon enough. Off we go. I missed him put his weapons away like a little badass. It's fine. I asked Dan to make me an animated emote of Tataru playing the bongos. <laughs> Literally just for this zone. <laughs> Literally just for this zone is what I want. So every time I'm here in the future, we can just have... It feels like only yesterday that I first walked through these doors. See that sculpted picture above the entrance? I mean, I... Would if I could, yes. That's the mark of Thaliac, the scholar, bearer of the waters of knowledge. It's no exaggeration to say that Charlotte himself, uh, itself, is one enormous shrine to him. And that's especially noticeable here at the studium. Wop! 
The song's too good. All right. Here it is, Phenomenon. While I expect you made note of it before, one can hardly miss it. This is the first time you've been here on official business, correct? While most of the space is taken up by the expansive auditoriums, it also houses numerous laboratories, testing grounds for experimental magics, and a most uh, and a host of administrative offices and so forth. As the center of what would later become the studium, it was established to promote the study of etherical phenomena, hence the name. Though, with ether being a fundamental aspect of nature, its scope expanded to include every conceivable facet of life and even the universe itself. And then, in the 432nd year of the Sixth Astral Era, Phenomenon was decreed complete and the studium officially opened as a place of learning. With a long and storied history, it is without question the world's leading authority in the theoretical, the arcane, the occult, astro astromancy, the countless other fields standing proud as Charlie's foremost educational institute. <laughs> you always did enjoy giving the grand tour to new students. Indeed, I've long since lost track of how many times you've decided that same foppish speech. Such is his undying love for his old stamping ground. He was top form back then, youngest to enter the studium, graduated with highest honors in magical arts and theology, undisputed champion in the debating chamber. Hold on. You both joined the studium at the same age, yes? And from where I stand, you're equally prodigious scholars. Nice of you to say, but Alphano actually entered half a year before me, nor did I do well enough to graduate with honors. I'm certainly not the studium's most notorious master debater. In all respects, have I ever been in his shadow? If nothing else, just remember that this was where the legend of Alphano Levelor began. We should expect everyone to be fully aware of our recent escapades. Hopefully, we'll be somewhat more welcome here than we were at the last stand. I know better than anyone the adoration the student body has for Halfano, and with a bit of luck, it might work to our advantage. A school of nerds. A school of nerds. A whole bunch of nerds in school. They like Alphano. Think he's cool. A whole bunch of nerds. Nerds in school. <laughs> Well, there's no time like the present. First things first, let's look for Skolark Montrachin. Other faculty tend to frequent their offices, but unfortunately for us, he's fond of wondering wheresoever his whims take him. Let's put up and ask the students if they've seen him. Yeah, this place is great. Oh, that's an excitable student. Oh my god, he's so excitable. Wait, wait. Why, hello there, fellow kids. How do you do, fellow teens? <laughs> Why, hello, how do you do? <laughs> Well, hello, how do you do, fellow nerds? <laughs> that was Alphano Levelor, wasn't it? The Alphano Levelor? And he's with his sister and Master Medicine's granddaughter? This can only mean one thing an event of epic, shattering proportions is fast approaching. Spread the word! Yeah, okay, I will do that, fellow teen. Oh, sorry. You said you're looking for the Skolark, yes? Knowing him, he could be anywhere. But Miss Aliopo should have a better idea. The kid is on the prowl. Ooh, look at these crafters crafting. 
place is great. Kyle, how are you doing? Unsurprisingly, this Garlic is not in his office. I did, however, speak with one student who saw him not long ago, so he can't have gone far. Why, hello, fellow teachers. Yes. Excellent, excellent. Carry on. Ignore me, stepping on your... stuff. I guess I should just continue with the... I just wanted to explore. This place is great. I'm on the other side of the table, ma'am. Are you lost? Wandering in off the street, perhaps? No, I am a fellow student. Wait, don't tell me. You're a trainee cleaner fresh off the guild ship. I'm right, aren't I? Oh, how silly of me. An orientation is in order. <clears throat> Allow me to bid you a warm welcome to Searcher's Meet. Let me start with a question. What is the most important thing you'll find in the studio? That's right, books! And what's the second most important? Why, that's simple. Everything else! That's what we deal in here at Searchers Meet. Whenever the students or tutors find themselves in need of equipment or materials, they come to us. If we don't have it in our stores, we send gleaners off to find it. Honestly, you wouldn't believe some of the requests we get. Eye of Paisa, this, tongue of Giga Toad, that. It's enough to make your hair stand on end. Which is possibly what some of our students are trying to accomplish. This being a school of magic and all. As our newest cleaner, you'll have your work cut out for you, but I think you'll find it quite rewarding. And the only thing I'm interested in cleaning is information for the scholar's whereabouts. <laughs> That's the one. Beg your pudding? You're not a gleaner? Then this was all an elaborate ruse? No, wait. Come to think of it, you never actually claimed to be one in the first place. My mistake. He was here, but now he's not. I did speak with him shortly before you arrived, though. He said he was on his way to make us meet. Go back the way you came in, and you'll see it on the opposite side of the entrance. It's a laboratory of sorts, home to many rare and expensive curios, not to mention alarmingly frequent accidents. If you lose your way, just follow the blood-curdling screams. Ha! <laughs> In the time it takes me to tell you all of this, the Skarlark has probably already left. Best of luck finding him. I have a feeling you'll need it. Nerds! Is there a classroom back here? Oh, 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 oh. Today, class, we learn the power of looking out. What the hell was that? What you doing? Oh, hello, yes, gossip.
I was about to say, I need to see this. <laughs> she has a fan club. Oh my god. I assure you, I'll tell you all about it after my business with the Skarlark has concluded. The Skarlark? Tell me, my good fellow, does this have something to do with saving the world from catastrophe? Might we turn our attention to Master Leveler's graduation thesis? I do have my doubts regarding our policy on non-intervention. Is it true that your experiences overseas are the reason you have incurred the ire of the Forum? Oh, what I would have given to see you butt heads with those old codgers! <laughs> oh. Things were bad enough during our school days, and Alphano's time abroad has only heightened his fame. Or should that be infamy? Eh, he had his rivals and detractors, of course, though most of them gave up that uh, gave that up after his adoring fans set upon them like ravenous dogs. Alphano, on the other hand, never paid them much notice. They were simply beneath him. Alice with a daring indictment of fan culture. <laughs> oh, hello, fellow students. Yes, the Skolark was here a short while ago. He offered me advice on my current research project. Though we spoke at length, I don't recall him mentioning where he was planning to go next. When we parted ways, he went down the corridor, perhaps to one of the auditoriums. Really? Your name is Meteor Comet? Meteor Comet. I don't know who named you, but I feel like that's insensitive. People died, bro. People died. People, people died. Oh, do I have to switch back? Just in here. I gave a speech and everything. Hello. Ah, I remember you. I pray we have not caught you at an inopportune moment. We wanted to offer our thanks for your kind words in the forum. hardly let that Inquisition go unchallenged. I've always believed that curiosity should be nurtured, not stifled. Thankfully, a majority of my colleagues agreed. A slender majority, aye, but a majority nonetheless. Had the vote not gone our way, we would be having a very different conversation, if any at all. Though I'd like to think you would have not given up on our cause. I'm told you paid a visit to the Annex afterwards. Yes, that's right. I was hoping to speak with the grandchildren of my dearly departed friends Gallif and Louisois in a less dour setting. But it seems I just missed you. I still can't believe how much you've grown. If only your grandsires could have seen the way you presented yourselves to the Forum. Why, if fair brought a tear to my own eye. You must have the patience of a saint putting up with this lot and their antics. 
Never mind Matoya's prize student. <laughs> Luckily, I know a thing or two about managing unruly younglings. If you ever need advice, don't hesitate to ask. This guy's an OG. I love this man. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> If I may, there is a rather more pressing matter we wish to discuss. What can you tell us of this duty that the Forum must fulfill? Nothing, I'm afraid. Like all humble servants of the Forum, I am sworn to secrecy. Or rather, I couldn't tell you if I tried. Our duty is of the gravest importance. Furthermore, if the particulars were made public, it would incite widespread panic. As such, those entrusted with this duty have been bound by an enchantment, which prevents us from speaking of such matters without the express permission of the Forum. Gotcha! So the Force Choke was an enchantment. Understood. How is that even possible? It's been some time since I last gave a lecture. Please, take a seat. Ooh, one of them good Final Fantasy XIV lectures. Take me away. I hope it has like a slideshow graphic portion as well. Those are my favorite. Dude broke the fourth wall. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh my god. Exactly what I was hoping for. <clears throat> we shall begin by reviewing the fundamentals of etherology. This right here is just future footage I'm gonna use in a video. This is great. Mark the mark the note of, of what the time is. I should write this down. <clears throat> The ether, which imbues us with life, can be categorized into three forms. Two are of the incorporeal sort, the soul, and the memory. Can anyone tell me the third? Hmm. You got this little JC. Corporeal ether, magic. Um. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Here's my problem. I don't think I know. <laughs> I mean, I want to say magic, but, like, I don't know. What is corporeal ether? I'm not even sure. I don't remember what he said the first two are. I don't remember what he said the first two are. <laughs> I, it, 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 he said, what do you say the first two are? Soul memory. Soul memory. And then the body, right? Your body. So I guess that would be corporeal, right? Your body. Soul memory body. Those are the three. So I'm going to assume it's corporeal. Yes. Very good. Thank God. That was like me taking a test. I knew the answer. I knew the answer, and then they gave me other answers, and I was like, oh, no. Do I know the answer? <laughs> like, I, I, this is why I do terrible at multiple choice. In school, I sucked at multiple choice. But if you told me to write an essay, I get an A every time. Oof. Okay. This is the form with which the layman is most familiar. Consumed by even the simplest of daily activities and replenished by the food and drink that sustain us, this form of ether is in constant flux. In contrast, the ether that comprises the soul is rarely subject to dramatic change. The same can be said for memory, as the two are intrinsically linked. Graha, gotcha.
Picture the soul as paper and memories as words written upon it. Okay. Now, what would happen if that paper was doused with ink? The same type of ether as comprises the memories. Then the soul would be oh like co overwhelmed? Covered in I don't What are you getting at? Whoop, whoop. It would blot out everything that was written. Oh, I mean, I guess you're right. Sure. If you want to look at it negatively. Precisely. We would be unable to recall the memories. And any activities that depend upon them would be hindered as well. So they basically redacted your memories? In fact, this exact phenomenon was observed on a vast scale not so long ago. And what might that have been? Y'all gonna make little JC answer this? The seventh umbral calamity. The people of Eorzea vividly recall Bahamut breaking free of the lesser moon and raining hellfire down upon the realm. But no one could seem to remember the events that followed immediately afterwards. Indeed, to this day we have yet to determine whether it was an unintended consequence or a deliberate act. The enchantment which binds me and the rest of the forum is based on a similar principle. And yes, it is a contravention of the Charlem prohibition against the practice of memory manipulation. Only when a new member is inducted and told of our great duty are they subjected to the process. A necessary evil. You have my word that it would never be used to manipulate the populace. I should hope not. But can this enchantment be dispelled and your memories restored? If nine-tenths of our members give their approval, then the process may be reversed. Then, and only then, would we be able to speak freely to others of our sacred duty. Hmm. Barring that, we must wait until we return to the Ethereal Sea. For there we will be purified, the blots upon our souls washed clean. And our memories drift apart and dissolve. Rather defeating the purpose, I suppose. We actually have a lot of good experience with bringing, like, just... But there are those memories that are indelibly etched upon our souls, some believe. I have... I, I have a friend. We pulled her ass out of the ether, like, I don't know, three times now? That ain't no big deal. All we gotta do is kill you, find a tree, bring your naked ass back. I think we got this. I believe in us. I believe in us, granddad. All we gotta do is kill you, and then we can resolve this whole thing. What happens after that? We are reduced to pure ether, coalesce with that of others, and create souls anew. I was about to say, did you just ask a scholar to like, excuse me, random theorist, what happens after death? Is that what you just asked this man? We're going to be here all game. The next 80 hours of this game is him just like, well, some say. 
Alternative schools of thought assert souls remain whole and return to the corporeal world. Reborn into another form. Oh, no. We're never getting out of here. Both theories have their proponents. Personally, I consider each equally probable. Whoa, you blew this little potato's mind. <laughs> well, I think that's enough education for today. Now that I've given you some food for thought, or rather, an entire banquet. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> Have you ever seen that video of the couple that make like a dog-shaped cake and they cut into the dog-shaped cake and the camera pans to their dog and their dog is like that's, that's how little JC feels right now. <laughs> he is losing his... He's like, whoa, bro. You just blew my mind. Uh, <laughs> then he walks I off like a boss. You that although I'm unable to assist you with certain matters. The resources at my disposal may still be of use to you. My, I can't. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. My favorite part. Yeah, you can. A little JC just wiggling his feet, just like. <laughs> I don't know why that's so incredibly cute. This entire scene, he's just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I'll arrange for you all to be given the run of phenomenon. Of course, as associate to our alumni and the students of Baldessian, this privilege is extended to you as well, my friend. Thanks, dude. Oh, and I suggest you speak with Ki Aliapo. She's well known among the artisans of Charlian, and her network of contacts may prove useful in your search for knowledge. I wish you all the best in your pursuits. Wes. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that! Whatsoever to take yeah. <laughs> You know what? I'd like to think he laughed at me for being too quick on the draw, and he was like, Kids. Kids these days. <laughs> idiots. Big idiots. You're right. You were right. I'm an idiot. Great. I love that. Dude, straight up. So, okay. So there is, is this like, question, question for the, for the, for the crowd. Did they pull a, uh, Star Wars on us? So like, is the ether that flows through the star different from the ethereal sea? Is that correct? They're two separate things. So the ether that Ustola returns to, she is, or is it all the same thing? So it's the same, it's the same thing? Okay, that's fine. No, 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 I, all right, we're good. It's live stream, we're good. Final Fantasy live stream, we're good. I thought they were doing that thing that Star Wars did that I hate where Star Wars was like, don't you get it, bro? There's like, the living force, and then the galactic force. And it's like, what? And it's like, oh, well, there's like the living force, which is like plants and trees and people and whatever. And then there's like the galactic force, which is like, you know, spirituality. I'm like, get the, the cosmic force. Cosmic force is what it is. I hate that. I hate that. Why can't it just be the force? Why can't the force just be the force just be the force? Cosmic force. You are correct. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know. It's, look. They made the changes. Don't look at me. Well, 
While Scarlock Montenay was, uh, is best known for his role as head at Studium, he is said to be one of the finest mages Charlene has ever produced. Having seen for myself the ease with which he weaves extraordinarily complex and powerful magics, I have no doubt the claim. No reason to doubt the claim, even. Some of my earliest memories of, uh, are of Scarlock Montenay, actually. He was a friend, a very close friend, or a grandfather. He would come for tea and amaze us with his tricks, much like his demonstration with the paper and ink. He's a huge part of why I wanted to enter the studio in the first place. Question. Do you think... Grandpa, do you think Louis Soir learned the things Louis Soir learned from OG school teacher dad? Right, no, I don't I don't mean like they just said that that he was that this dude is like one of the best mages. So, assuming they were friends, and we can assume Granddad was more the Alice of the two, since one of them stayed around to teach, and the other one went off to go like fight and stuff. We can assume Granddad was the Alice. This is my this is my headcanon fan fiction. Granddad was the Alice of the two. And so he was less talented, but he knew he knew what he knew because he hung out with like the nerd. That is my grand to say. That is my head cannon for those two. Well, that's given me much to mull over. I feel as though we're one step closer to understanding the form's true motives and the mysteries of life itself, for good measure. It's funny, I came here with the intent of expressing my gratitude, only to leave more indebted than before. I have a feeling his friendship and support will be a great boon to us in the days to come. And on that note, let's head back to the Annex. Perhaps on the way, we could better acquaint yourself with, uh, what was her name? Quee Alipo? Quee Alipo? And the Skullark, uh, as the Skullark suggested, while I share our finds with Ra. Key. Key, Alipo. <laughs> oh, hello, friend. Should I switch to... Does this work? Hey! Give me. It's you! Oh, yo, one of the, uh, the one the Scarlock was telling us about. Little, yes? Brilliant! Just the man I was hoping to see. As I'm sure you are aware, the studio is the most prestigious educational institution in all Charlene. As such, we make a point of only working with best educators and students. But the cleaners we employ are also held to the same high standards, of course. Which is perhaps why it's been so difficult to find assistance we need of late. Surely you understand the trouble of finding competent, capable help. <clears throat> that you are come here suggests you're willing to lend a hand, no? I'm certain you would have much to gain from working with us, if so. Do let me know, should you commit to lending your services to the studio here, you can turn in some stuff and get some scripts and things. Yeah, great. Are we getting a scene? Now, allow me to explain our work here. Professors and students from our many faculties gather in searches meet in order to do business with and recruit reputable individuals such as yourself. Allow me to briefly introduce those here at present. Here we have Boric from the Faculty of Archaeology. He works as an assistant to one Professor Rurusha and is currently seeking skilled metal worker to help restore an ancient relic. Then there's Jude, who belongs to the Faculty of Astronomy. He seems to be looking for an artisan able to work with leather, cloth, or wood, but he wouldn't tell me much more than that. He's awfully shy, you see. 
Next, we have De Broye. De Broye. A student searching in the faculty of, uh, studying in the faculty of medicine. I'm fairly sure she's carrying out research on the supervision of Professor Galvaroche. In any case, I hear she's after someone who knows a thing or two about medicine and nutrition. And here's Hingeshi, not Hingashi, Hinageshi, of the Faculty of Anthropology. She told me she's searching for botanists and miners at present. By the sound of it, she and Professor Tankin, Grand Moff Tankin, are dealing with formidable task of creating a Death Star. The Death Star. It's like a Death Star, except on the planet, which is called a star. <gasps> oh my god. We've cracked it. Last but not least is Professor Tlaquatia. Tlaquatia. An associate professor in the faculty of etherology. I heard he is in need of a fisher to help him conduct research for his thesis. Unfortunately, things do not seem to be progressing well for him at the moment. I'd say those five are the ones most in need of supplementary aid. I'll leave you at your discretion. Boopity boopity bee. Academics can be such an odd bunch. Just be sure not to leave anyone in the lurch after you agreed to help them. <laughs> She's like, I did that once. Let me tell you, it sucks. Great. I'll come back to that whenever I finish the ones from the Crystarium. <laughs> let me let me tell you. While this looks lovely, and I'm very proud, this, on the other hand, is a shit show. <laughs> oh. I imagine crafting's easier now because they don't have to do the high quality stuff, right? They got rid of that. Are quests just like give me a normal one now instead of a high quality? Because that would be for me. No, HQ is only in gathering. Ah, oh, son of a... So I still probably have to craft something high quality. What were y'all saying about going to the, to the, to the place? I don't see a quest in the last stand. You told me there was a quest in the last stand with pretzels. I don't got it. I don't see it. I love that they just were like, bring out the pan flute. Like Yoshi P. The pan flute? He's like, the pan flute. Bring it to me. spent most of the time in, uh, in Thabner. I've yet to fully grasp the lie of the, uh, the lie of the land, not the lay of the land. Whatever, he's smarter than me. The lie of the land here in Charlian. Even find my way to the annex proved a challenge. Estinian returned not long after we departed for the studium. A shame that he missed the chance to attend our lecture with the scholar, or perhaps not. Seems I've done an adequate job of relaying uh, Scholar Montmé's lecture to Raha. Given his experiences in the field of souls and memories, he had no trouble understanding it. That's what I was thinking. Uh, you'd better not let your guard down around Key. One small favor becomes another, then another, and before you know it, 
you'll be running to the other side of the world in search of a bottle of wine or some rubbish. And again, it might make for a welcome change of pace from your usual heroics. And as the scholar said, it could lead to some interesting discoveries. Now they make me making me want to go do that. But I ain't gonna, because I can't. <laughs> Ah, welcome back. From what I hear, your trip to the studium proved most educational. While you were away, I received word from our fellow Scions. As expected, news of the warding scales was met with much joy. Preparations are now underway to bring the leadership of the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance together to determine a way forward. Are we gonna get like a, a classic Stormblood council scene? Our friends have asked that we bring the scales in our possession to Limsa Liminsa. So, the time has come for us to go on the offensive. It's too early to say for certain, but that does seem to be the way the winds are blowing. I, for one, can think of no reason to oppose such a plan, but let us see what awaits us in Vilbrand. Let's start by getting the scales out of storage. Give me a hand, would you, Astinian? You're gonna torture me this entire expansion, aren't you? This is it. From from now on, it's just you torturing the hell out of me. That's what this is, isn't it? Whew! I didn't realize these crates were so heavy! I did all the work. Why are you taking credit? I just want the... Okay. I shouldn't complain, though. Vritra and the alchemists of the great work put their heart and soul into each and every one of these scales, so you must treat them with the utmost care. Hmm, are you not coming with us? As much as I would like to escape the foreman's watchful gaze, I have little choice but to stay behind. We're already on thin ice, and if I, in my capacity as our official representative, we're found to be consorting with foreign powers. Well, you can imagine how that would go. I shall remain here and do my utmost to avoid ruffling any more feathers as I await word from Master Matoya and our other allies. Yo, is Matoya gonna be like, Well, hello, you old bitches! Mama is back! Let's go kick some ass, eh? Because I'm here for it. With luck, we'll soon have good news of our own to share. The tide is about to turn. I can feel it! Alpha no! And it was all down here from here. Great. Great. World Ending Calamity incoming in five, four, <laughs> wait, why did you do three? Because I knew it was going to come sooner than later. Five, four, three. <laughs> if you learn out of interest, be sure to let me know. In the meantime, I will do what I can to aid our cause, though I fear that will be precious little given the circumstances we're coming back to Taru we're coming back I literally just have to enter the command room they're like walk back in okay sure the hell that lady was like I've chosen no clothes today. First time in Limsa? <laughs> you right, you right, you right. Now to go see my future wife. Oh, I was told to expect you. As you may or may not be aware, the Admiral is present, entertaining the Elder Seed Seer in Sultana. Three of the most powerful women in the world in one room? Uh, do you need a moment to prepare, or should I show you to them? Dude, send me in.
My apologies for calling you away, little JC. I needed you here, in my life. Everyone out of the room. Clears the table. Climb me like a mountain. Yes, I will. On the contrary, we are honored and grateful and pleasantly surprised to be joined by such esteemed company. Twas only right that this discussion be conducted in person. We are locked in a war of attrition. Our forces struggle to contain the threat posed by the towers, and it is only a matter of time before we are overwhelmed. Victory will only be claimed through decisive action, and we have taken the initiative to set the wheels in motion. It's reassuring to learn that we are all in court. But I might ask what your plan entails? But might I ask? It hinges entirely on the warring scales and our ability to utilize their potential to in the fullest. <laughs> During your time in Charlien, the Allied nations have been engaged on separate fronts with no end in sight. <laughs> to make matters worse, a surge of abductions of kobolds, Sahagin, Ixal, and Anata have given rise to increasing number of primals as well. But your triumph at Rallet's Heart has given us cause to hope once more. The time has come to free ourselves of this menace. And it is you, the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, who have shown us the way. Look, if they didn't want to do this as a voice actor cutscene, this is what they get. I can't do their voices. While the bulk of our forces will continue to hold the Talafaroi at bay, we will dispatch our finest to strike at the enemy's heart, Garlemald. These brave few will be the Ilsabard contingent. I think such progress has been made in so short a span. Its objectives are twofold. The first is to provide aid to the people of Gurlamold. As previously reported, countless Imperial soldiers and civilians have been tempered, robbed of their free will. They serve the Talavaroi's every whim without question. They too are victims. It is our duty to deliver them from their suffering. Not for strategic or political gain, but because it is the right thing to do. And poisoned. <laughs> and instantly poisoned. I have chosen to do the right thing. Dead. I do not ask that we set aside the decades of conflict and conquest. That we simply choose to forgive and forget. I ask only that in choosing to remember, we do not also forsake our compassion and morality. For without that, there can be no reconciliation, only death without end. Aye, and that we can all agree. Our second objective is the colossal tower that Thancred and Eryon J observed in the capital. Though its purpose remains unclear, there's reason to believe the smaller spires are merely a precursor of what is yet to come. Until the Tower of Zot is toppled, we'd fail to make any headway. Though the same can could be said for the Talofaroi. There's certainly in no rush to press further into our lines. I'd wager the Spire's primary purpose is to divide and keep us occupied while they work towards our annihilation. This would appear to be substantiated by Ishtola's analysis of the towers. 
influence on ethereal currents. Based on her observations inside the Tower of Zot, the spires siphon ether from the land, consuming it to maintain their form. However, they draw forth far more than is required for this task alone. The excess of ether remains unaccounted for, but we can be sure it is not being harnessed for our benefit. It wouldn't surprise me if, the, in the least, if it was being redirected to the larger spire in the capital. There's logic in that. Regardless, once we have uncovered the truth, we'll bring their schemes crashing down along with their infernal towers. That's all well and good. What would you have us do? I assume you want me to jump on it? Can I can I jump on it? I really want to jump on that tower. I love jumping on towers. Say the word. I will jump all over that shit. Let me do it. Send me in. It's Danny. We don't need to jump on the tower. We don't. I'm just saying if you need me to. We don't need it. We don't need to jump on the tower. I'm just saying. I'm here if you need me to. No, we're fine. I assume it's more than handing over the scales and being on our way. We want you and your scales to join the Ilsabard contingent. Consider it an official request from both the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance. Do you accept? Sturdy nod from little JC. Perhaps you should be the one to answer that. Mm, for revenge against the Talaferi, who's answering that? You know what? For the people of Garlamand. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it for the people. Couldn't have put it better myself. Ishtola, Banquet, and Norion J have already pledged their support and are on their way to meet the rest of the contingent. They were positive you would come to the same decision they did. Luckily for all involved, this music track kicked in at the right time, or else it would have been really awkward. Why did we decide to play this right now? I thought it would be a lovely inclusion. JC went through all these damn goldsmithing quests and made countless music boxes. I felt it would be fine to do that. Anyway, once you have delivered the warding scales to Alamigo, the contingent will embark on its journey to Ilsabad. Robon and Lord Emmerich are overseeing preparations, so I suggest you make yourselves known upon arrival. Pack warm clothing, furs, and the like. Without it, the cold will do you in before that a lava roy so much as draw steel. As for us, we'll keep the enemy busy while you're gone. They're not the only ones who can create a diversion. Now go, safe in the knowledge they always the will be as you left it. I don't believe any of this shit. Alpha no has doomed us all. Also, that was a very strong nod. That was a like. All right, now that I've butchered <laughs> some of the most important characters in the game. A cap oh, uh, the, uh, the Alamegan Quarter. Really? We're going to Garabanya, huh? Nice. Uh, This motorcycle flies! <laughs> when it's a motorcycle, it's just funny. Is Lee about to show up? Like, oh hey! Hi. Well, if it isn't the old gang. I must quiz Thank you on Jay on the conditions we can uh, expect in Garland. I know it's cold, but how cold? Well, I need to keep my ears covered. They can be a bit sensitive at times. They just literally are like, do you want to fan out more? Do you want to like, 
Imagine Grahatia in a little hat with his little chilly ears. Are you thinking about that right now? Good. Fanboy. <laughs> oh, good. Now draw your little fan arts of him chilly. Hashtag Endwalker. <laughs> I'll admit, this is all rather daunting, though not quite in the way I was expecting. We'll be standing shoulder to shoulder with our alliance's finest, the best of the best, the warrior of light, and, well, me. It's silly, I know. Perhaps this is my way of distracting myself from the part I should be worried about. Marching into Garlemald. Not that same conversation! Alsei's like, I noticed you were looking at me, but talking in Alphano. Do you still think we look alike? Yes. You know, I'm quite looking forward to seeing who's been selected for the Ilsebar contingent. I have a few people in mind. Care to make a friendly wager? I have a few people in mind, too. I have a few people in mind. If Emmerich asks after me, say I'm getting on fine and leave it at that. Don't you dare breathe a word about the court. <laughs> <clears throat> Look, it's gonna be it's gonna be members of the B team. Come on, it's gonna be the B team. Very excited. I'm hoping it'll be uh, a certain redhead and her face painted friend. I'm, I hope they'll make them go with us. Because I we need to resolve that story. Ah, fancy meeting you here. I trust our mutual friend is settling into life as a scion. Collaboration never was his forte. The moment the fighting ended, he... Uh, off he'd go like a gala cat. Swept up in a strong breeze. Now I'm imagining those little tiny cats. <laughs> Oh, it feels so bad. It felt bad when I was killing them. I feel bad imagining one blown away. <laughs> and now I'm imagining that happen in the background of a very chilly Grahatia fan art. Where he's like, he's so cold. In the background, there's like a... Wah! That's what I'm imagining now. You're welcome, fan artist. But rest assured, he will always be there when you need him. Probably. Ain't that the truth? Ah, the wonder has returned. You've been busy bringing down a tower and producing the keys to destroying the rest of them. You should be proud. Those warding scales of yours are what made this whole venture possible. Will you and Lord Emmerich be leading the contingent? Regrettably, no. Our role is to organize the various delegations into a cohesive unit. Once we've seen all that, it's back to our respective posts. We dare not neglect our duties for too long, lest our defensive efforts fall into disarray. And just between us, there's a fair amount of opposition to the formation of the Ilspar contingent. The very suggestion that we send out some of our finest troops behind enemy lines to render aid unto the Garleans has made me rather unpopular in certain quarters. More unpopular? Everyone in your town hates you, dude. Can't please them all. Estidian's like, don't worry, bro. You're popular with me. Sadly not, though I do my best. Truth be told, I'd much rather be at your side, charging into the, for uh, into the fray. Alas, I've battled my own to fight. Where words may serve me better than any blade. I need to say it, but Lord Emmerich's struggles mirror my own. The time being, the best we can offer you is peace of mind from knowing yours is in safe hands. As you fight the good fighting of Sabard, I and the other commanders will do what we can to convince the naysayers that our cause is just. Thank you, both of you. We meet again. I was way off and I'm so happy! Much has occurred since we parted ways and were lit. 
From what I gather, the protective talismans you obtain led to the formation of this expeditionary force. My contribution on this occasion is but a minor one, but that being the information I have shared with Maxima. For the sake of the people of Garlemald, may the fates be on your side. So you're not coming with us? Is it Maxima? So you're not coming with us. Strange. I thought you'd have a stake in this. I do. The Tlaferoi have laid waste to my homeland and enslaved my people. But though every moat of my being cries for vengeance, I cannot be the one to deliver it. My presence alone would place the entire mission in jeopardy. I stand accused of murdering Emperor Varys and plunging Garlemald into chaos. Were I to travel with the Ilsbach contingent, it would give my countrymen ample cause to question our motives. Conversely, those who believe me innocent may instead celebrate the return of the formula goddess and attempt to raise me to a position of leadership, further destabilizing the region and complicating the contingent's missions. Mission, even. Whether I'm branded villain or hailed hero, I would only hinder your efforts. I understand world's in your hands. We deliver your people from harm in your stead. I doubt they'll be pleased to see the champion of yours has set foot in Garlene soil. Interesting. I like that number two. I'm gonna say the third one. And I will defend it to my dying breath. After the sacrifices my sons and daughters made, I can do no less. I and the government of Worlet intend to offer refuge to those fleeing Garlemald. Should that time come, we will be ready. of Gaius's rather unique circumstances, I instead will assume the role of your guide. Though I may have defected for political reasons, my love for God of Alden doors, I would stop at nothing to protect her and her people. Well said. Might I ask you to escort our friends inside? Still hope. I still got hope for a redhead and a painted face man. You might even bump into an old acquaintance or two. And if you, I don't see you again ere you depart, may the Fury guide and protect you, all of you. Damn, everyone's just standing around now. The Gaius, I too stand accused of Varys' murder. Though I am rather less recognizable on sight, still. It's something to bear in mind once we reach Garlemald. So that's Gaius Belsar. The horrors he must have seen. Plenty of his own making, I do not doubt. I neglected to mention earlier that we received a report from our troops that may be of interest to you. While engaged with the Lunar Primal, a great worm swooped down from the skies above and came to their aid. This worm, as described, was a spitting image of Tiamat. It would seem she too continues to wage war against the Tlaferoi. I was wondering what was going on with, with her. With the knowledge that our allies will hold the line in our absence, we may devote our attention to the Ilsebardian front. I suppose it's easy for some people to forget their civilians in Garlemald too, when the only Imperials they've ever known are soldiers. Oh, once we've seen the contingent on its way, I'll return to my duties here in Alamigo. As many of our most capable will be traveling with you to Garlemald, we who remain will have to fight that much harder to make up the difference. But let no man say I do not welcome the challenge. Aye, this old bull isn't ready to hang up his horns yet. Regardless of how my countrymen receive you, the cold will not treat you kindly. Underestimate? Uh, under Underestimate at your own marrow. Ooh! This is my favorite gift. The mystery gift. 
The other members of the Ilsebar contingent are gathered in the royal palace. I shall inform them of your arrival, so please make your way inside as soon as you're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Oh, I have to talk to this guy? You guys have any new things to say? Nope. Ah, the remaining members of the Scions, your friends, and most of the Ilsebar contingent await you within. Would you like me to see it through? Yes. I'm ready. I'm ready to see my friends. By the twelve. Woo! They brought everyone! Get the shit out of shit! Glad you could <laughs> join us. I hope you don't mind, but we went ahead and started without you. Am I getting a moment to see all the various quest NPCs they brought? Oh my god. As you can imagine, our traveling companions were eager to become acquainted. It is a rare thing indeed to see such a diverse and talented group of individuals assembled for a single purpose. We fight not only for the sake of Eorzea, but for the entire world, including the people of Garlemald. Much rides on the efforts of the Ilzebard contingent. Oh my god. I love this. Tremendously love this. This is ridiculous. Oh my god. All right, I'm going to try I'm going to try and see if I remember everyone. Uh okay, so um I can't That's Alkazolka obviously. How could I forget? Uh Lise uh, what's, you know, you know, I can't, what pants are you wearing? It's the only way I can tell you two apart. What pants are you wearing? I can't tell. The way, it's one of them. I can't tell. I know, I know, I, <laughs> I know it's one of the siblings. I just can't tell which one. It's the boy. It's the brother. Great. Okay. Um, the black mage crew is here. We've got the uh, S. Pippin back there, Lise, obviously. Um, my dude from the uh, 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 Machinist Guild. The Machinist Guild. Um, we got the uh, the monk. Is that the monk girl? The Pooglist. You're totally right. Not the monk. The Pooglist. The Bard quest. Um. This dude who is literally always around. <laughs> this guy who is just always around when you're like, I need a dragoon. He's like, I am here. And then, of course, we have our bro. Our sweet, sweet bro. And then, uh, I don't recognize this guy. Should I know this dude? Yeah, these are the bard quests, obviously. I don't recognize this guy at all. Marauder? He's the Marauder rep? Are you sh I thought the Marauder guy wore blue or purple or something. Is that true? Oh, oh, never mind. That's what he wore when he would show up and fight you. You're totally right. In those quests where it was him but not him and it was really obviously him. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. He, he, wore the blue to, he wore the blue to trick you. Obviously. Obviously. Right, right, right. Who is this then? At first I thought this was the old grandpa... I thought this was the old grandpa fighter, but that's 5.4. It's sick. Pirate man, pirate boy. Can I tell you something? So far, everything that's happened in this where I didn't recognize it has been from 5.4. And I just have to ask you a question. Did I skip 5.4? The other day when you were like, oh, Owen, Owen's from 5.4. And I was like, who the hell's Owen? And you're like, oh, 5.4. I'm like. <laughs> I clearly don't remember anything from 5.4. 5.5, I remember a lot. 5.3, I remember a lot. Clearly, I don't remember 5.4 at all. I feel terrible. Because the other day I was like, oh, it's obviously Amon, clearly. And you're all like, no, what? 
how'd you guess that? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> That's the only person it could be. You're like, actually, that was Owen. I'm like, who the hell's Owen? I don't, <laughs> I don't remember 5.4 at all. Wow, okay. Uh, great. All right, well, this guy's from 5.4. Okay, lovely. We're still missing two characters I thought for sure would be here. I thought for sure would be a part of this. Indeed, which is why I am glad to find myself in the company of many trusted comrades. Unexpected. Unexpected. Love it. Lucia. I have come at the behest of Lord Emmerich, who has honored me with the role of Ishgard's representative. And for the good of all nations, not least my former homeland, I am determined to see this mission through to its end. Hell yes, let's go. We have a hard road ahead of us, but walk it we shall, together. We too welcome this opportunity to work together once more. I have faith that if there is a way to resolve this conflict, we will find it. Allow me to introduce you to the rest of our company. Everyone! If I may have your attention. Amazing. Amazing. It was the brother. Now this feels like 6.0. We're in it now. This is great. Might I ask you to speak first? If I must. I am Arun Senna, spokesman for the Gridanian delegation. Here on behalf of my esteemed sister, the Elder Seedseer. Aren't they? We shall provide support and protection to those in need during our time in Garlemald. To that end, I am joined by healers selected by the Conjurer's Guild, with the Order of the Twin Adder's Finest serving as our escort. Of course, with an experienced white mage such as yourself accompanying us as well, those requiring more involved treatment will be in safe hands. Raya O sends her regards, by the way. I am so happy I did everything, man! Suppose I'd better say my peace. <laughs> Remember me, I'm from 5.4, the one you love, clearly. Wait, I know you. The name's Sickard, in case you've forgotten. Truth be told, I'd rather you had forgotten. Any road, the Admiral asked Captain Hillfear to send his best, and for whatever reason, Of course, if I'd refused, I'd be the laughing stock of the bloody executioners, and my reputation's taken enough of a key haul in as it is. But more importantly, like any pirate worth his salt, I know when you're staring down a storm, you gotta trust in the commander of your ship. So if the Admiral wants us to go to Garlemald, not for plunder and glory, but a promise of peace in our time, then that's what we'll do. Since we all know how much the Empire loves its steel, we thought we'd bring along a few smiths to make the most of it. Give them a pile of scrap and they'll cobble together anything you fancy. Of course, just like the Gradanians, we got fighters of our own. We might have come with a more constructive purpose in mind, but we're more than capable of cracking skulls, believe you me. Well, you're certainly raring to go. Then again, so are we. 
The most dependable warriors of Uldar and Alamigo have assembled at the Sultana and General Eldin's behest. Short boys getting it done. If Garlemald has truly fallen, then the whole place is likely to be crawling with Telophoroi. We'll need plenty of troops to clear and hold a path for others to follow. That's where we come in. Naturally, Marshal Tarapin and I will be leading from the front. It's been some time since I last saw you in your element on the battlefield. From what I've heard, you've become pretty fearsome yourself. Master Matoya, the Avatar of Destruction. <laughs> With comrades like these, I know we'll succeed, no matter what awaits us. And then we might finally get a chance to enjoy a good long rest. But until then, let's give it our all. As for Ishgard, we Temple Knights have come in force to uphold our nation's commitment to the peace and welfare of our allies. The bitter cold of Garlemald is a formidable enemy in of itself. Our experience fighting in ice and snow will prove invaluable in the days ahead. Accordingly, I have been designated commander of the Ilzabad contingent. I will do all in my power to provide you with the leadership and guidance you require. The four High Houses, House Hylenart foremost among them, have arranged for a host of machinists to join us on our mission. Their knowledge of Imperial Magitech is sure to be a great boon. They will address any problems of a technical nature, together with the smiths of Limpsa Lumitsa. There is another awaiting introduction. <laughs> Lord Amonalane! Ah, yes. Uh, Emmanuelaine de Fortin, at your service. Though, lest there be any misunderstanding, I should stress that I've not become a fearsome warrior while you were away. Rather, far from it, actually. My brother, in his infinite wisdom, decided this would be an excellent chance to make something of myself. Oh, and fight for world peace and all that. But, should the opportunity arise for a spot of ballroom dancing, I will be your twinkle-toed gentleman of the night. <laughs> I dare say your fancy footwork may be all- No way! May your graceful prancing lead the way to victory! Hell yes! Hell yes! I cannot wait to regale on a hoa with my tales of daring do. This man just trying to get some, and he has not changed in three expansions. <laughs> Sir, one day, I believe, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. You got this. I believe that concludes introductions for the Grand Company of Eorzea. Our allies from the Eastern Alliance were due to arrive some time ago, but it would appear they have been delayed. Would that be the Shinobi of Dome? Actually, they've been tasked with relaying messages back and forth between the various Eastern nations. According to Lord Hien, however, an equally capable company of warriors has been sent in their stead. Little son? <laughs> Is this happening? Out of my way! Oh my see? god, Moon Mama! <laughs> this is incredibly great. Forgive us for coming late. 
We are the delegates of the Eastern Alliance. Cyrena, and you've brought company. For battle and blood we come, as a step is sorely lacking in both. No towers befoul our lands, so we marched on those of Dona, only to find them beyond our reach. But now our thirst for slaughter will be slaked. No quarter to the enemy! <laughs> this guy's like... Can I say I love her? <laughs> oh. Sadu Hatun, no. We go to make peace with the Iron Men, not war. Warriors of the Steppe, we've heard many tales of your bravery. We welcome you as allies. And these other ones you have brought are. Members of the Dalmascan Resistance Group, Lente's Tears. And the Bosnian Resistance. Between them, they have a wealth of experience in espionage, and are particularly adept at infiltrating Imperial facilities, which is fortuitous. Since Garlemald's domain is so vast that I could never hope to handle reconnaissance duties all by myself. I look over and I see chat say, Thancred, smiling at those bunny girls. And then when I look back at Thancred, it says... The guild created room 119, and all I can think about is Thankwood's like, I need a room. <laughs> Thankwood's like, yes, between all of them and this room I just got, this is going to be a great time. <laughs> Alamigo, all lands which have suffered the tyranny of the Empire. I would never presume to question your motives. Nevertheless, I must reiterate that our goal is to aid the victims of the Telophoroi, the common folk of Garlemald. And they are victims, make no mistake. Though I understand that many may struggle to see them as such. You're more right than you know. For every one of us that answered the call, there were a dozen that refused. Not only in Alamigo, but everywhere we went. And who could blame them? The Empire's always been the enemy. But after seeing what we've seen, fighting and working against and with Guardians, there's no denying the simple truth. They're just people. No different from you or I. They've got their share of liars and murderers, but so do we. So do we all. Fordola, who once swore herself to Garlemald, has proven herself a trusted ally time and time again. Every Eorzean here knows Sid Garland, the Imperial defector who shared with us countless technological wonders. Speaking of which, that's literally two I'm expecting to be here. Gaius bloody Balesar himself is working to help rebuild Whirlit, a nation he once conquered. So you can believe me when I say that every fighter here understands and accepts that the Imperials are not monsters and are deserving of help. Or at least that they were able to put aside their feelings for the greater good. It won't be easy, but we're all determined to make this world a better place. What lingering concerns I may have had were clearly unwarranted. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Little JC walks up and is like, however, Alphano did say that things were gonna get better. So just letting you all know in advance. And then everyone looks at little JC, then looks at Alphano, 
and they all go home. <laughs> They're like, never mind. This will be fine. This will be fine. This will be fine. Then we are in accord. Now, let us review our strategy. To reach the Galian capital in northern Ilzabad, we must cross the central mountain range. Fortunately, Garland Ironworks can provide aerial transport, sparing us this most treacherous part of our journey. However, attempting to fly any closer to Garlemald would attract the attention of the Telophoroi. As they appear to have seized control of the majority of the Imperial military, we must assume that includes its fleet. In addition, Garlemald possesses devices that can interfere with airship navigational systems, further discouraging an airborne approach. Plus, it would it would give the ghost of Emmett Selk, whatever's going on, it would give him no time for a little bit of dialogue, so we'll walk. Given the circumstances, the closest we dare deploy our contingent is an area between the range and the capital, the Magna Glacius. The Magna Glacies? I would have said Glacies. The Magna Glacies. From there, we must travel the rest of the way on foot. We will also need to bring the airships with us to ensure we can withdraw with haste. Although much of the terrain will be blanketed in snow, we should be able to make use of local roads and shipping facilities. The vast ice field will afford us an unobstructed view of the surrounding area. On the other hand, it will also allow others to easily spot us. So it is imperative that we only make camp in positions where we can easily defend ourselves. And the airships, which must be kept safe at all costs. We cannot account for every possibility, so we must be prepared to think on our feet. We will be tested. Sorely tested, I expect. But for our homes and for our people, and a people not our own but in need, we will succeed. Spare no effort in your preparations. Once we depart, there is no turning back. Yeah, departing! Those dudes got hyped. I'm pretty hyped. That was great. Oh, they did not. These sons of bitches. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't even have this many voices in my repertoire. Oh, no. I just don't. I don't know where to start. There's so many choices. It'd be awkward if I re recorded this for strictly just the VOD people. I guess I'll go right here first. Let me have a look at you. A touch nervous then to the battlefield, perhaps. Well, I shall be out there alongside you as a temple knight, serving with your fine band. Though, I may not look it, I was the Azure Dragoon once upon a time, so you can be rest assured I will give all that I have in the coming fight. I certainly won't be shown up by you or Stinian. I remember when you and I blew Stinian up. Hey, Stinian! Hey, Stinian, remember when you blew up? Remember? Remember when you blew up? I remember. If it isn't little, tis thanks no small part to you. The manufactory's future is looking brighter than ever, my friend. I'm pleased to report that I and a handful of my colleagues have been selected to join the contingent. Ere the expedition has ended, even the Temple Knights will sing our machinist praise. Once they have borne witness to not only our mechanical proficiency, but our combat prowess too, of course. Well, well. If I'd known what a social gathering this would turn out to be, I'd have dressed for the occasion. Still, this seems the perfect opportunity to mingle with the other guests. Would I be correct in assuming those ladies over yonder are Sirna and Sadu on the step? Mm, perhaps I should introduce myself, though I don't much look uh, like the look of the fellow with the enormous axe. Just call him little son, he loves that shit. 
I cast my lot in glory is to bridge the divide between Garlemald and her territories, that all may be united in common cause. But we were disparaged as a radical element, the centers looking to stabilize the empire from within. Many friends and even my parents perished in, in, un, in unfortunate accidents. I too would surely have met the same fate had I not defected. Nevertheless, I still dream of quality and peace for us all. As the world itself stands on the brink of collapse, I hold out hope that one day that dream will become reality. I'm so glad I found you! I for you a letter from Master Heyman. Let's read together, shall we? <clears throat> now let's see here. <clears throat> I have every confidence that your fish shall bring the Tullofera to their knees, and should you espy any beautiful maidens thereabouts, perhaps sing to them by breezes. Charming, master. Well, more fool me for thinking that letter would contain something actually inspiring. Let's just, um, forget this note exists and focus on the battle ahead. Lace! It seems so long ago we were sailing across the Ruby Sea and charging about the Azim Steppe with Serena and the others. I'd say we're overdue for another adventure. Ah, it brings back memories to see so many familiar faces. We've been through so much together, good times and not so good. I expect Garlemald will be mostly the latter, but I'd like to believe we'll look back on these days more fondly in the years to come. For that to happen, we'll have to make it out of this alive. Don't you die on me, eh? Girl, I ain't dying. Mm -hmm. We came as quickly as we could. Well, we would follow your example and devastate the Tlothoroi with the full extent of our powers. What are not for your brothers, busy? <laughs> we'll return soon enough. Often has father told me of the struggles faced by Alamigo in the days of the occupation, and I too have crossed swords with the Empire on many occasions. Though Garlemald has long been our bitter enemy, her grace has elected to bolster the Ilswald contingent with members of the Immortal Flames. As representatives of the Sultanate, we are one in our commitment to the cause. I'm here representing the Marauders Guild. And it's my job to keep the Smiths out of harm's way. Mind you, with them hammers of theirs, they can put up a fair fight themselves. A good, good bit of luck is we over and done before you know it. Maybe when it's all is over, you could pay the Axe Master a visit. He still tells all the new recruits by the time you yelled, Kujada, I will avenge that boy's parents. <laughs> I remember it like it were yesterday. Also, did he say felled? No, you killed. Killed is what he said, not yelled. I'm making up words as I go. There's a lot of words on the screen right now, and I can't read none. Tell you, poor fell. This is the voice, apparently. Guardians are the only ones we allowed to impose tariffs on at sea. Well, it's easy pickings, but I made myself a pretty gale. Since they've been so generous to me and mine, perhaps it's time to return a favor and give them us something back. Greetings, Little! The time has come for us Marines to show our valor upon the battlefield. All who see us will know our name and quake before our might. To victory! Come hells or high water! Yay! In case you were wondering, in case you were wondering, bro, I'm like 9,000 years old. That's why I sound like this. Don't even stress. The she will be standing behind to defend the Twelve Wood with my sisters. She was of the opinion she would make a useful addition to our contingent and was eager to make good on her vow to accompany me as well, which was flattering, but ultimately, like, whatever. It was a side of their skills we better put to use keeping the homeland safe. I will, of course, uh, I am, of course, obligated to share with her every detail when I return. I 
Can't lie to you, little. I wasn't entirely for this whole thing when Sanson spoke to me. But if it means being your brother in arms, then who am I to pettifog? I shouldn't be hard on him, I suppose. This barred unit is quite impressive, really. Yes, one must give credit where credit's due. Rather uncouth for one to do otherwise, after all. Our prowess has finally been recognized by the Order of the Twin Adder. Naturally, Gai what is it? How do you say this guy? Guidelot? I can't remember how to say this guy's name. Is also here helping us. Moose's ability as a bard is unmatched. I do worry about his judgment. However, you need not. I shall be keeping a close eye on him, I promise. With the mole champions of the Nadam, and the Dothral have sent so many here. I had thought to defend the step in their absence. And I would have done so were it not for my stepbrothers. They urged me to grant our allies the sun's might, that his radiance may deliver them unto victory. Though I must tolerate the presence of this feral Dothrali dog. As first among my brothers, I can do no less than accept this challenge. My deeds will become the stuff of legends. I cannot for the Iron Man nor their troubles. It is the destiny of the weak to die in ignominy. Even so, I will do as I have agreed. I volunteer to join this band at Serena's request. And if she thinks it's a worthy cause, that's reason enough. Though we hail from different tribes, our bond has grown strong of late. She is much better company on our hunt than any of the steps oafish men could dream to be. Girl! 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 I'm glad to see you well, little. Grandmother was worried for you. The night I agreed to come hither and join the contingent, the gods sent her a strange dream. Two suns, one burning red, the other frozen black. Closer they circled, closer and closer, and as they danced, the world fell to ruin. In blinding chaos, she spied blackened silhouettes and knew at once that one was yours. Yet we knew not how to interpret this dream, save as a sign that great danger awaits. But whatever lies ahead, I will walk with you, traveler. Oh, oh, I get to do my favorite voice. Um, <clears throat> Allow me to express my deepest gratitude for your role in liberating Bazia. Me and my countrymen owe you more than we could ever hope to repay there. Now that our dream has finally been realized, Balls Jin has seen it fit to send me, uh, send a few of us to join the expeditionary force. I hope our skills will be of some use there. Okay, thanks, bro. I have close ties with the scouts of the Eastern Alliance and the various resistance groups. It'll be an absolute joy to work with. Thank you, you dog. You have not changed at all. At all. Blessed are we to have made countless steadfast allies of our journey's course. Indeed, we are joined today by many new acquaintances, who in time shall we come to call our comrades and mayhaps friends. I was half expecting to find the man who taught me red magic amongst our number, but he's nowhere to be seen. Great. Great question. I suppose he's had a share of unpleasant experiences with the Empire, but so have we all. Perhaps there's some other reason. Is that dude about to show up? Because last I saw, he was like, come on, literal Arya Stark. Let's go do a thing. That's right. For those of you who haven't done the Red Mage quest, it's literally Game of Thrones. Come on, literal Arya Stark. Let's do some things. Well, in any case, 
I have a feeling I'll see him again once all this is over. I'm sure he'll be pleasantly surprised by how much my swordplay improved since we last met. We've been part of joint military operations like this before, with far greater numbers, but for some reason this feels different to our previous experiences. Despite having shared little more than introductions, there's already a palpable sense of camaraderie. It's because they're all my friends! I did not expect to see the other former Azure Dragoon here of all places. As you know as well, I am not one for verbose, verbose greetings. We shall instead let our lances do the talking once we're on the battlefield. Then we'll see if the other has been diligent in his training. Remember when, remember when you blew up? Wasn't that so funny? When you were like, I have the power, you can't, you try to go Super Saiyan, but then you blew up instead? Remember that, Astidian? It was hilarious. It was so funny. And we were just watching you. And then you blew up. <laughs> you crazy guy. This is extraordinary. To be in such company, the finest our allies have to offer. With comrades such as these, we are bound to succeed. I'm certain of it. What do you have to say about that, Alpha? <laughs> We're definitely okay. Doomed. Besides the delegates assembled here, the Amalja and several other tribes offered to send troops of their own. Unfortunately, due to their physiology, many would struggle simply to survive in the harsh climate of Ilsabart. They would also likely prove tempting targets for abduction by the Telophoroi. All things considered, they can better aid the cause by bolstering our defenses in Eorzea. Though their eagerness to do more has been noted. We few shall have to suffice. Ere we embark, we must distribute the warding scales to our comrades. Care to do the honors? Sure. Oh, did I miss? Oh, she's right there. It's all right, we'll talk. Hoarding scales for this guardian delegation, I take it. Many thanks. These talismans may prove to be the deciding factor in the battles to come. I find myself conflicted by this foray into Garlemald, sent by the Empire to infiltrate Ishgard, only to throw in my lot with those uh, with those whose secrets I was supposed to be stealing. And now I lead a mission to save my countrymen I betrayed. But that is doubtless why I was chosen by Lord Emmerich. He would have me put my extensive knowledge and former ties to good use. I will not disappoint him. For the future of Ishgard, Garlemald, and the world at large, I will lead us to victory. I've led troops in the battle many times, but never a unit with such a diverse range of talents. While I've been briefed on their capabilities, I expect you could provide additional insight into their strengths and weaknesses. I appreciate any advice you may have. Please! That a set of warding scales I spy? Not that I would know what they look like. Wow. Look at these. Even a layman can tell me. Uh, even a layman can tell they're bustling with ether. All the better to fend off the tempering waves? Is that the right term? Anyway, these will give us one less thing to worry about, which just leaves the other mountain of whatever else is waiting for us in Garlemald. Only one way to find out, eh? Uh, nervous or not, I'd march through all seven hells if it gave me a chance to put Xenos back in the grave where he belongs. You leave him alone. You leave him alone. You don't deserve to fight him. Only I do. We're going to have our final dance. So help me God. It's going to happen. I've been waiting two expansions for this guy. I'm going to get him. He's going to wish he stayed dead. You leave that man alone. Oh, well, you got something for us. Yeah. Oh, them scales everyone's been talking about. Eh, pretty little things, aren't they? Reckon it'll be worth a gill or two when this is all over. We'll hold on to them for now. And, and one more thing. I know what you're thinking. 
Why didn't they send Ainsley instead? Fuck if I know. All the Admiral and Captain Hilfer told me was they needed someone to help safeguard the future, and here I am. Can't say they haven't got a sense of humor. Of course, some of you might be wondering. Some of you. What the hell? We're just. What good pirate is on dry land? In the middle of a sudden snow of all places. Well, we and the crew will do whatever needs doing. Let's set sail, or however your saying goes on airships. Yes. So, these are the famed warding scales. Enough for me and my men, I see. I myself am especially grateful for this opportunity to visit distant lands. I wish to follow in the footsteps of Master Otola and learn all there is to learn of the star we call home. Indeed, that is the primary reason I have volunteered to join the expedition. To journey outside the Twelve's Wood, much less enter into Imperial territory, is a rare privilege afforded a Pachahal. Not that I'm tagging along to see the sights. The Garleans would benefit from my healing magics, as would our comrades, should fighting break out. Everyone's like, oh! to be cold in Garlemald, so we came prepared. Some of us. Oh, the talismans! We have to keep these close at all times, yes? I will see that no one misplaces theirs. Ah, and before I forget, I have a message from him. Distant lands and times of strife together stand, together fight. In darkness shines the light of life. That man, that man wrote me a poem. I hope I have done his words justice. Doma, like much of Hothard, has been plagued by the towers. Yet, while we could not be here, while he could not be here, he expressed he, he wished to express his shared conviction. He and Yugiri labor without rest to unite the people, and with their aid, will we keep the enemy at bay? And we of the Step and Eastern Alliance will repay their efforts by ending this war. Great. Do you have a warning scale for me too? Yeah, have it. Thank you for this, and for going to such incredible lengths for the sake of my people. Though I have little to offer in return, I would impart some advice if I may. You have been told by many to wear cold of Ilsebard. I cannot stress enough that this is no token warning. I will be distributing specially made warming tinctures, courtesy of the Alchemist Skill, but understand they are no substitute for proper protection. I leave the provisioning of said protection to your discretion. Now, let us proceed to the Alamegan Quarter. While you make your final preparations, I will have the pilots ready the airships. It's something of a constant refrain that we require warmer clothing. My present guard may be lacking, fur collar notwithstanding. Concoctions to fortify the flesh against wind and cold are commonly sold in Old Dawn markets, though they are of dubious provenance and efficacy. Tis said, however, that in recent days the Alchemist Guild hath produced a tincture capable of such a feat. Perhaps the alchemists of their Thevnerian counterparts did spur them to action, that they not be put to shame. This coat is quite warm, but I have something rather thicker for occasions like these. There's no telling how long we'll be on the open, and we can't go starting fires willy-nilly if we want to avoid detection. If you've anything you still need to take care of, you better see to it now. Girl just got her shorts. Girl. 
girl had a coat. A long-ass coat. And she just got her shorts. And they're like, you don't want that. Actually, you don't want that. Okay. Woo! Hey. Hey. I know, Flarg. Flarg, Ash Caller. I know that you are AFK. But you just prevented me from starting a thing and missing a Stinian and Grahatia, and I want to let you know. You're the real warrior of light. Since my revival, I've been lax in expanding my limited wardrobe. I think we have time for a quick trip back to old Charlie, and I recall a rather fetching coat. Preparations. I've got my armor. I've got my lens. What more could I need? I'm telling you, I still think Estinian does not wear underwear. This dude is 100% commando. Can have been more convinced of that than ever before. Meanwhile... This little robot from the future showed up. <laughs> this is our last chance to make ready before we set forth. You needn't worry about Orion J and I. We still have what we wore in Garlem all before. Stinian claims to be quite warm and toasty beneath his armor and since he spent a fair bit of time up north recently as well, I have no reason to doubt his words. Most of the others, we're borrowing grand company stock, and the rest of you can do likewise, I suppose. Provided you are not overly concerned with style. Hmm, not to put too fine a point on it, but I wouldn't be seen dead in one of those ridiculous overcoats. If only I had time to find something to my liking. Oh my god. Ahem. Hark! Is that the cry of scions in need of a tailor I hear? It's your girl. <laughs> but how? <laughs> I have my ways, so yes indeed he do. I thought, you thought you could sneak off to Ilsebard without telling me? <laughs> Nothing escapes my notice. Are you drunk right now, Tataru? Now, you will wear these garments I made for you, whether you like it or not. Mama had a few sips and crafted some stuff. Don't even stress about it. You've never ceased to amaze. But why do you need a new outfit as well? Wait, are you coming with us? What? No, of course not, silly. It's all the name of fashion. Rather, the pursuit of the highest quality fashion. Besides, how could I expect others to wear my creations if I've never worn them myself? Good point. Uh -huh. I did have one other thing to share. A fine bottle of tequila. What? Ergamus and Bloom Wither have finally returned from assignments in faraway lands. They'll be staying at the Rising Stones for a while to keep an eye on events through Eorzea. Since they'll be running things back at headquarters, I was wondering if I could lend a hand in Charlotte. Oh, why not? You can keep Kryl company at the Bels uh, Baldessian Annex. Yes, we'd love to have you there. And I heard Agmus and Bloom Wheeler did a fine job carrying on in our stead while we were lying comatose. With them in charge of the Rising Stones, we have nothing to worry about. My thoughts exactly! Plus, I heard that's a delightful drink in Charlotte I have to try. It's made with magic and booze. 
Also, while I'm confident you won't go collapsing again because certain someone who shall remain nameless isn't in a position to teleport your souls to another world, if anything similarly disastrous were to happen, I'll be well positioned to do something about it. Anyway, I've got a few things to take care of and then I'll make my way to Charlian. I really do hope these new clothes are enough to keep you warm and guard the board. It's not much, but it's the only thing I can do for you. I'll then pray for your safe return, which I will every day that Mama forgets to remember to forget. What? I'm drunk. Let's not keep the contingent waiting any longer. Do I get a new outfit right now? Is that what my question mark was? Oh my god. Here you winter woolies, handcrafted by yours truly. Yo! Oh my god. Complete. Well, now I have to clam. Now a man's gotta clam. She's still in the position. Take it out of my hand. <laughs> 